everyone. Welcome to Project Rose Expert Talks. We are thrilled to have Sadie with us today. Sadie started her career as a research analyst and then grew to become a lead data scientist at VSP Global. While working with VSP Global, she also founded Women in Data. She was also a data science instructor at Coursera. Sadie, thank you so much for taking time to talk to us today. Yeah, my pleasure. Happy to be here. Okay, I would like to begin by asking, what is women in data and what is the purpose? Like, and also how does it feel to be like a woman in data? Yeah, so women in data's mission is to increase diversity in data careers. So we're really looking to close the gender gap in careers like data science, data engineering, analytics, uh, machine learning, et cetera. And the reason we exist is there is a huge gender gap in the how many women are represented in these careers. And yet we know there's a large opportunity for the job growth in this area. And so we wanna make sure that everyone has an opportunity to get into this industry and has a successful career in it. And so we do this through, we achieve our mission through our three pillars, which are awareness, education, and advancement. And we, we really use this as a way to show awareness to the jobs that are available, help educate our members in terms of getting into those jobs. And then if they already are working in the career, connecting them with the network so that they continue to advance and grow and lead in this area. So when we think about what it means to be a woman in data, it's actually quite diverse as well. So we have people from a variety of backgrounds from psychology to music to computer science and physics. And so, you know, one of the things we really love to share is just the journeys that women go on to start this career. And so being a woman in data can be quite diverse. Um, you know, pretty much every job today, now you work with data in some <laughs> shape or form. And so we wanna make sure that we're just there supporting our members and their career, whatever, whatever life that takes them on. Uh, uh, that, that makes so much sense. And of course you started uh, Women in Data because you saw a huge gender gap there. So in your experience, what do you think keeps a woman out of data science? Is it the lack of skills on their end or is it that they feel there's a lack of safe environment while they work? Yeah, so, you know, it really comes down to, again to our three pillars um, and it's part of the reason why we created it, which is one, just awareness that this is a job opportunity for them. So, you know, this industry is fairly new, so a lot of people are learning about it, but women disproportionately don't get that exposure to know that, hey, this is something I could actually do and be good at. So awareness is number one. The second thing is just in terms of them seeing themselves in that role. So right now, you know, there's a gender gap in it, but even a broader gender gap at that leadership level. And so women don't see people who reflect, you know, what they look like. And so it's hard for them to place themselves in that role. And then, you know, there definitely are things that once you do make it through the education and land the job, you know, there definitely are biases in that along the way um, that women must overcome. The other thing is getting jobs is a lot harder because usually people hire from their network. And if there aren't as many women connected in that network, it's really hard to get your foot in the door and hear about some of those jobs. So, and then finally, just moving up into that management position. So again, we see that women um, usually have to take career breaks to have children, that sets them back. And then being able to come back and have that confidence um, and hit off at the same place where their male counterparts are is really difficult, let alone the fact that there's a gender pay gap for women in a lot of areas. So there are numerous challenges. You know, I sometimes think of it like a, a regression model where you put all the variables in and each account for a portion of the outcome. And so that's what we're trying to attack is what are all those variables that are accounting for women not being able to get jobs in this industry? So this also, I mean, I would really like to understand how does this work? Like uh, when you started Women in Data, how did it start? Like women came and approached you or you approached women to motivate and inspire them to be a part of data careers. How did it all start and how did you go about it? 
Yeah, so it, it started very small and very, very slowly. Um, I was getting my master's degree in data science at that time. I was also working as a research analyst. And I just noticed how few women were in the field. And I was very surprised because I was interested in it. I didn't think twice that there wouldn't be many women in this industry. And then when I got there, I realized there were so few. And so at that point, I realized for me, even to be able to survive, I would need a network of people. And so I started just by having, you know, posting online a first event through Meetup and saying, hey, if anyone in my city is interested in this, let's come and network and, you know, talk to each other and collaborate. And only three people had registered for the event. And then, you know, 15 minutes prior, two people dropped out and they said, oh my goodness, this is such a failure. I wanted to connect with the community. Only one person is supposed to come. Well, then at the time of the event, no one had even showed up and I was feeling very down, very, you know, sad. And so I decided, you know, maybe I should just wait for 15 more minutes to see if someone will show up. And so I did. And thankfully that one person showed up and brought three people. And so it was really just that first group of people connecting staying consistent and having monthly meetings, like the network grew. And from the network growing, we were able to grow then as an organization, grow in our mission, grow in our programs. But it really just takes one person to stand up with you and amazing things can happen. That, that's so true, so true. And uh, while you were also doing and motivating uh, women to join data careers, you were also one of the first female data science teacher to teach on Coursera. And uh, how, how was that experience? Please share that as well with our viewers. Yeah, so Coursera was a very special platform to me because in 2014, when I was, I heard about data science and I was interested in it, I started taking classes on Coursera and I really fell in love with the platform. It's like such an easy way to get exposure and to get access to some of the best teachers out there. And so when the opportunity um, presented itself for me to teach, I really did not feel like I had the time. A lot of times opportunities will present themselves and I'm like, why me? Pick someone else. But, you know, one of the things that motivated me to do it was the lack of representation of women in as teachers. And again, I knew that like it's easier for more women to get in the field when they see people who look like them in the industry. And to me, Coursera is such a powerful platform. Like that's the place where we need to see diverse representation. And so a big portion of the reason I first said yes to that opportunity was really just the, the to be a role model to others. And I definitely did not feel like I was ready or had the time to do it. Um, but it's those stretch goals that push us to be better. And it really was a wonderful experience teaching on the platform. And I'm very lucky. I think over 300,000 people have taken the class now. And I get to connect with people all around the world, which is quite incredible. That, that, that's, that's super, like super awesome. And you also mentioned gender pay gaps in one of your answers how much has it bothered you I would I mean it bothers all of us that there's a huge pay gap difference so how much how much does it bother you and how do you ensure that you know the women who are joining your team they're all empowered and they, do, they don't have to go through this or something like that yeah, so it, it definitely is really unfortunate I when I'm confronted with challenges a lot of times, I try to not dwell on it for too long, but think about like, okay, well, what action can I take and how do I make a difference in this area? And so, you know, for pay gaps with myself, it was one thing that I had to learn just how to negotiate myself, and how to negotiate my value and to not make it about essentially being male or female, but showing that like, hey, I'm providing value regardless of my gender. And so, I had to go on my own learning journey for that. There's a book I really love. It's called Never Split the Difference. If you're interested in negotiations and working on those skills, I would definitely check that one out. Um, and then within the community, 
like a lot of encouraging to each other. You know, we have a Slack group where people will post and say, hey, I'm getting ready for an interview. Should I negotiate salary? Can anybody give me tips? So people are always sharing and encouraging and we're all learning together. And, you know, I think that support and knowing that you're not in this fight alone really helps to make a difference. That, that's correct. That's correct. We are not in this alone. That's for sure. <laughs> I, I, uh, now, uh, moving on to my next question. When you interview candidates to join your te team, what are the two, three filters that you generally look for that these candidates must have these certain things? Yeah, so the first one is what I would call like to be hungry or curious. So somebody who is not looking to just be told what to do every day to come in and say, okay, here's my task. Here's what I'm going to do. Like, I want them to have that fire and that passion. And it doesn't have to be about the same things that I'm interested in. Even if, you know, they have side hobbies and side hustles, like those are interesting for me to learn about because it shows like they're willing to put the extra time in and to go above and beyond and make that happen. And so I would really say like, number one is just having that hunger and curiosity. The second thing is, knowing your passion and your purpose. So there are going to be hard times in whatever job you're in. And so knowing what your purpose in life is, knowing what you're passionate about and working in those areas, that's going to get you through so much more of the difficult times. And I want to find those people who are going to be able um, to do that. And then the last thing is really people who are humble. So people who are really good team players where you know, you're not looking to be the star of the show. Like you may be the star, but like you're willing to teach others on your team and to train and to work well with others because like by ourselves, we can go really fast, but together we can go much further. And I think that's really important to remember. That's so correct. That's so correct. I mean, passion is such an important thing today. I mean, uh, it keeps you going. So that's an, yeah. amazing, that, that's an amazing filter that you look for. <laughs> so uh, you, uh, why, uh, while you have yourself been a mentor on one of the most popular online resources, I would like to understand what are the online resources do you often use to, do you refer to stay relevant in the field? Yeah, so definitely always taking MOOC classes through Coursera and Udemy and edX and all of the learning platforms. So that's a great way when I wanna take like a deeper dive into a subject, um, I'll definitely gravitate towards those. One of the blogs I love for data science is Analyticspedia. And I think it just has a lot of really great resources. There's just so much wonderful content from there. And then just for like quick kind of news, LinkedIn has actually become one of my favorite resources. I feel like, one, it's become my favorite social media platform. I just feel like the, the content on there is getting better and better. People share really insightful things. It's in quick little tidbits. Um, so it's a great resource as well. Yeah, that's correct. That's correct. I agree with you on that. And uh, while one of the things that we do at Project Pro is give our uh, 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 user base reusable uh, templates to you know to, uh, help them pro perform their projects faster so do you have any favorite hacks or tactics that you use yourself or you inspire your women to you know get their work done faster yeah so you know finding more time in a day is always really nice um, but when you can't find more time in the day really my number one key to make things get done faster is being able to focus and so to be able to really focus at a task at hand comes down to planning and a lot of times what I find is if when I have so many things on my to-do list and I'm jumping from one to the other I get less done in the day and when I what I love to do is set like one task every day that if I could only get one thing done, like what would make me feel accomplished that day? And by focusing just on one thing, it doesn't seem as much in like when you zoom into a day, but when you zoom out into a month and a quarter and a year, like you've accomplished so much. And so I think having the ability to plan and to focus at the task at hand allows you to get so much more done in a faster amount of time. Correct, correct. That's right. That's right. 
and also while your interaction uh, largely is with women while you are uh, the founder of women in data what do you think is generally missing in people when uh, in upskilling themselves to data science or machine learning Yes, yeah, so I think one of the things is just the actual project practice. Um, if you are new to the field, it's great to take classes and to read online resources, but getting into the real world and working on a real problem is such a different experience. You know, the data is a lot messier, the problem is not as well defined, there are delays. So getting your hand, getting hands on experience is really essential. Um, and then in addition to that, I would say just having the support system as well. Like one of the things I learned the fastest from is from my peers. So finding people who have different skill sets than I do is really important for me to make sure that, you know, I'm, I'm learning as much as possible. Got it. Got it. So th this has been really interesting, Sadie, like truly, really, really interesting. And I would like to say to all the viewers who will be watching this that if you are really passionate about data science and if you really have that fire in you, please reach out to Sadie and she'll be more than happy to help you out, and especially if you're a woman in data science. Nothing better than that, isn't it, Sadie? No, that's fantastic. I'd love to hear from anyone. Yeah, it would be amazing. And uh, at the end, I would just say to every woman who is just joining careers, don't fall into the loop of taking courses after courses, get real project experience. That is what and how you will succeed in your career. Yes, I couldn't agree more. <laughs> Eventually, you just have to jump and take the dive. Correct, correct. So thank you so much, Sadie. Thank you so much. This has been amazing. Yeah, my pleasure.